so many requests over time to look at all the so-called budget rifles and we did look at the Remington 783 and a few others but it took me a while to get a, an XPR, Winchester XPR in the studio and as some of you may know or most of you uh, Winchester and Browning are sort of one company uh, headquartered in Belgium and I got the XPR in and right away I liked the rifle I have to say I mean I could have purchased a synthetic version but as you know I usually buy used rifles for the channel it's just a matter of economics which is fine this is in 308 uh, but I like the wood stock I did look at the synthetic versions and they're fine too and I thought what I'll do is make a video you you have to maybe have a little bit of patience with me I know I tend to talk too much but I had so many different questions over time about the XPR and the pre-64 model 70 and the post-64 model 70 so I'll try to answer most of them and I'll try to do it as efficiently as possible but getting back to the original XPR so first thing I notice is on the barrel it says made by Browning Viana, V-I-A-N-A, -A, in Portugal. Doesn't matter to me where rifles are made, so long as they're made well. And I took all of these, well, I've taken pre-64s to the range many times and post-64s more times. And the XPR, of course, um, is a new thing for me. But here it is, it has these, um, you know, modern lines to the stock, which I think probably were originated by Benelli. They started sort of creating a more modern look to firearms, and then the other firearms makers started copying them. As far as the technical features go, and I have to remember that the photography crew can't move as quick as I can, so... Um, yeah, we've got a, this is the rifle, not really together. I took it apart for filming, but this is, this is the guts. It's got a decent stock and they've done the, the recoil lug in the stock thing. So it's embedded in the stock. Uh, this is a feature that's necessary if you're not willing to either cast or mill a receiver that has a recoil lug on the action such as the post 64 model 70 there's the recoil lug and pre 64 model 70 there's the recoil lug this is how it's supposed to be done and i still think that's the best way and naturally the mauser 98 which this is a version of has the recoil lug there as well we talked about that a lot of times but nevertheless um, you just have to transfer recoil forces to the stock somehow, so they did that. And on the XPR, here's the mortise for the recoil lug, so you can picture this sitting in the stock. And I've probably said this many times before, but you either sort of have a variation of a Mauser 98, whether it's a Springfield or a pre-64 Model 70 or a whole bunch of other rifles including the excellent Montana rifles um, or you have a variation of a model 700 Remington is what it amounts to um, now they've added a new dimension with three lug bolts which really isn't a new dimension but this is one of the three lug bolt variations other than that it's a tubular receiver you can see it's essentially it reminds me of a barrel blank that they've milled out an ejection port and a place for the trigger. I'm not trying to take anything away from the design, that's just what's involved in firearms manufacture. To remove the bolt, you depress this button, so that's easy. Very uh, shallow bolt lift, which is a nice feature of the three lug bolts. And I should say, they've engineered the cams nicely. This is not a hard bolt to open. Some of the three lug bolts are very hard to open. They tip the rifle in your hand. The XPR is, is not like that. It's a beefy, big bolt, and the bolt head, to me, appears to be one piece. Um, it's going to be hard to focus on the bolt face, but we'll set it down here. And for fun, um, some of you will be happy to know, because you requested me to talk about the Browning X-Bolt. So here's the XPR, 
bolt face and here's the Browning X bolt and you can see three lugs massive bolt and um, the XPR has a, a much bigger diameter than the than the X bolt and well, I'll be doing the X bolt video shortly and comparing it to the A bolt so we've got a very solid looking bolt we've got some plastic happening here yeah pretty sure is um, you know, I put magnet on it so it, it's not magnetic and it, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's plastic. I usually judge by temperature. Uh, the whole contraption is held together by this plastic. I, I don't know if it's an extrusion or whatever you call it. You, you actually send me a lot of terminology what I should be saying, but I forget what you tell me. But it does the job. It just sits in the bottom of the stock, you know, like like, oh, it's got a neat little lip on the bottom. You kind of have to tip it in like an AK magazine. But yeah, so it does that. And then you've got a couple of uh, screws to, that hold the whole thing together. And that is your XPR. And how does it shoot? Well, what I did is, as usual, I can't show you, but I took these three to the range. So we've got a, a 308 Post 64 Model 70 and then a pre-64 model 70 in 243. It's actually a Wildcat, but I just shot factory loads in it. And uh, the most accurate was the post-64 model 70, which I knew would happen because I shot this rifle before. And the second was the XPR. Um, oh, and also on the table, before I lose my train of thought, shot thought is an original model 54 Winchester. And you can see the trigger is it's the that same mauser trigger concept uh, some of the younger viewers ask me how do these triggers work that's a big subject but i'll do my best real quickly so essentially that is the striker and you have to capture you have to prevent the striker from moving backwards and so you have metal surfaces and a sear so as I push this bolt forward, it's going to be caught on the sear here, which is attached to the trigger on this teeter-totter motion. And see, it's caught here. Now, if I pull the trigger, you'll notice that the striker goes in. See how it's in? And then when I don't pull the trigger, the striker is sitting out and then quite simply on on all of them all you have to do is somehow remove the blockage of the striker so we're starting to do that this is a two-stage pull that's the first stage and then we reach the second stage the striker moves in so no matter how complicated you see triggers and people like to make things complicated they're all accomplishing that one way or another that's the Mauser the Winchester Post 64 um, is beautiful because you can see what's going on and but you can't see the striker so uh, the the end of it uh, but hopefully you get the idea and you can read up about all this stuff but I I do get your letters and um, appreciate that you're asking me so getting back to the 54 you can see how the model 54 action is very similar to the post 64 pre 64 mm -hmm. model 70 like these are very similar rifles and the model 54 was undervalued for years i think these are fantastic rifles by the way take note of the weaver scope on this um, no turrets for windage and elevation because they put the turrets in the in the rear mount you, you adjust the mount itself, which for target shooters, you'll, you'll see that, but not everybody knows that that existed. Anyway, Model 54, just a great rifle. One of my favorites, actually. Um, but anyway, we'll talk about that another time. So the XBR, we talked about the floor plate. We talked about the plastic, um, the magazine. I mean, this is nothing to write home about. It's a plastic magazine, but... Every time I say anything about these, they work great. 
Um, feeding was flawless at the range, excellent accuracy. And, you know, I'm not a target shooter, but it's, it's easy to tell an, an, a rifle that's accurate, and all three of these have more accuracy, frankly, than one really needs for hunting most of the time. Now, there are some of you that are shooting at yardages that I don't even try, and that might be a special case. But anyway, lots of talking, plastic magazine, excellent. And um, the whole thing comes together in what I would have to say, I looked at the American 783, shot them all, shot them lots of times, and I kind of like the XPR the, the best of them. I wish I had a 350 Legend, but I ended up with a 308. But it doesn't matter. I think they probably know how to put rifles together. And this was the cheapest way that they could do it. It has this trigger, and I guess there's a little window in here so that you can see what's going on. But I don't know what's going on. And um, it's got a cool system for the safety where you can... There's a little button here that you might not be able to see. But there, there's got to be tons of YouTube videos. There's a little button here, and what it does is um, when you close the bolt with the safety on, if you have it in a regular position, then you can't open the bolt. But if you move this button, you can open the bolt and the rifle's still on safe. And some of you might know what the safety is locking. As you know, I don't trust any safety, so um, what they do or are supposed to do, I, I'm not sure. Anyhow, um, and now quickly onto the guns. Uh, because a lot of you collect pre-64 Model 70s, which are great guns to collect, and a lot of you collect post-64 Model 70s. And I can see a lot here, but you may not be able to see. So that's the post-64, um, as I said, in 308. And I'll flip it around so you get a good look at it. You can see people condemn these because they say they're just Remington 700s. Well, not really true at all. They still have a fairly complex receiver profile. This is not a tubular uh, receiver like I just showed you on the XPR. This is very similar to the pre-64 receiver. And generally speaking, and again, just generally speaking, the post-64 is more accurate than the pre-64. Other than that, if the film crew can somehow film these components. This is the pre-64, post-64. Here's the magazine box on the post-64. Here's the magazine box on the pre-64. The reason I didn't take it out is I got fed up with this rifle. This magazine box kept on falling out or it would get stuck in the stock. So I put some crazy glue, which I often do. Here's the floor plate and uh, the retention screw for the floor plate. And here's the floor plate as well for the post 64. And, and naturally this is missing the claw extractor. This is a push feed action. Um, I should probably take out the bolt. But we've done all this before, but these questions keep coming up. Here's the post 64 and here's the pre 64. And then you can have a look at them again. And naturally, this is a more complex bolt to make than this. But the net result is not that big a difference. Controlled round feed, for some people, means everything. And that is an important feature. But if you look at these bolts themselves and the accuracy of the rifles, um, I think you can probably see what I'm getting at. The Post 64 just happened to be different from the pre. Other than that, it's an extraordinary rifle, and I don't know any post-64 that I've ever owned that didn't shoot as well or better than the pre-64, and I've always loved the very simple trigger. This is the pre-64 trigger here. You can have a look at that. You can have a look at the shaping of the action. This is not a tubular receiver. This is not one of those guns that people condemn for being machine made, even if it is now machine made. And here's the post 64. Same concept, slightly different shaping here and there, but essentially a pre 64 
let's say, made, made in more modern ways. And then, in fairness to the guns, this is the stock you'll see on a Post 64. And for me, it's one of the most comfortable stocks of all, especially with iron sights, just excellent. And here's the pre-64. Now this is not fair because this stock was messed around with by somebody. Um, I just don't have another, well I have a stock but I don't have another rifle so that's, and they all have, these Model 70s have the proper recoil lugs. And um, I probably totally confused you but I have to cover a lot of ground just because of the number of letters. Uh, the core message is the XPR is excellent. Um, I've seen a few of them at the range. You probably have too. Um, hopefully they'll make them for a while because I think it is the best of the budget rifles. Even though I like the Ruger American. And they all have little things that are better. I like the Ruger American a lot in 350 Legend, which takes the AR mags. But again, um, some people write me that my videos are too long. So I don't want to make this too long. It's a lot of ground to cover. I, like I said, I hope I didn't confuse you. If you can buy these XPRs um, while they're still sort of at the low prices, I, I have a hunch they all will move the prices up for their budget rifles. That's already started to happen. And then they bump the, the main rifles, so we may see some models disappear as the budgets become the main line. Um, that's probably about it, so thank you very much for watching and hopefully following me. We'll look at the magnificent, I have to say, Browning X-Bolt. Just great rifle. Phenomenal accuracy on that rifle. On Patreon, we'll be looking at the rolling block, a Swedish rolling block. And um, I hope you can join me on Patreon. Uh, we could use all the help we can get. And uh, follow us on Instagram. And most importantly, subscribe. And thanks so much again for being on the channel, and we'll see you all next time. Take care.